What's up guys, Pipop101 here. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own map for Blade and Sorcerer U11. So let's get started. First up, we want to create a scene. So we're going to right click, go to create, and then create a scene. Name this whatever you want, preferably the name of your map. So in my case, here we go. You can double click on it and it will open it up right here and you'll notice the name right there. Now that we have our scene, we're going to want to type in proto level and we're going to steal all the assets that we can from our proto level after opening up our proto level we need to choose our level definition our creature spawner our racks melee scroll down a little our map a kill zone and the item spawner book once you've selected all of these and of course you click on these drop downs to actually get to the inner parts of them Click on all of them and drag them in. Now you either control or shift click on them to open them up. And you can right click, remove scene, do not save it. Now we have everything that we need, so why don't we get started on actually making the map. To start, we want to right click, create a 3D object or cube, and we can name this something like base or ground, because this is where we're going to be standing. Now make sure to set the position to 0, 0, 0, and you can double click on this, or you can do F and it'll bring you right to it. What we want to do is either scale it up for a player to stand on, or we can do just type in some numbers. I think 20 should be fairly good. Why don't we start with our spawner? So we have our creature spawner, our item spawner, map, and we should be good. So if we get our creature spawner right here and you guys take a look at it, we zoom in, we can actually see that this is an altar and has everything that we need on it. So we can just move this over by dragging that. And make sure to line it up properly. That looks to be good right there. Honestly, we could even back it up just a little. Now it does have a couple things that we don't need, like this proto bench, so we can delete that. And we do not need this creature spawner or the waypoint or the lever. But this is set up. We can go to our wave spawner right here, and we will need to actually choose the location of the waves. So notice how far the waves are. All of them are, well, quite far away. So we can just delete them all. And now we have our first location. The enemies will spawn facing whatever direction the blue arrow is pointed in. So if we make four of them, we do control D to duplicate it three times. Drag it over and this should be good for that one. Again, these don't really need to be perfect or completely symmetrical either. These are just where enemies are spawning in to fight you. But regardless, I mean, looks pretty good like this. Our waves are a little bit high, so what we can do is just grab them and drag them down a bit. You want to make sure that they're a little bit above the ground so the enemies don't teleport in. And once those are all made, we need to drag them in individually. So one, two, three, and four. Now you really don't need to mess with any of this stuff. And if you do want to add in your own custom wave music, this is where you're going to have to do it. So just like how we've been adding in these addresses, once you actually make the wave music an addressable, this is where you put it. Just one thing that I'd like to make sure that you guys notice in the actual wave spawner script right here, if we go to our book, make sure that the ID is set to arena. If it's anything else, then you won't have all the default waves. And we obviously need the default waves in our custom map. Now, one thing I'm going to have you guys do is control D on this creature spawner. And I'm just going to keep it in relatively the same spot and rename it to item spawner. And this is only because I want to actually steal this altar because it's already made because the item spawner book is, well, only a book. and We don't need just the book. So we can unpack this prefab. And what we're going to want to do is take the old item spawner book and we're going to drag in the ui into this author book and what we're going to do is simply just change the location of it so we have the wave spawner selected we right click go to copy component and in the new ui spawner we're going to right click 
paste component values. And if we zoom in on it, you will notice that this is actually in the right spot. And in order to be able to tell, we can remove the wave spawner. And here we go. Both books together side by side without any issues. Now you can delete the old item spawner book stuff. And now if we take a look at this, you can click on the item spawner. You'll notice that this pops up with the item spawn position, and this is where the actual weapon will spawn. So I don't want it to spawn right there, so what we can do is just drag it over just a little bit. And let's move it, so now our weapons will spawn in right here. If you guys want to change how the weapon spawns in, you can make sure to change the angle. So if I wanted to set it to something like 90, 90, 90, well... It'll spawn in just like that and there should be no issues so i'd recommend you play around with this a little bit because it can be fun now we've set up both the creature spawner and the item spawner what we need to do is drag in our let's say weapon rack next so if we scroll out you'll notice that our weapon rack is quite a bit far away so we just need to drag it in and why don't we put it at the same height as the rest of them so let's drag it in and f to zoom in can also use this to turn how it looks. That should be good right there. Awesome. And just make sure that it is facing the proper way because we want, well, I guess the prongs are on both sides of this, but we want the prongs facing towards the map, not away from it, of course. So if we take it, we can just rotate it like that. So if we set it to zero, I'd recommend just keeping the blue side facing towards whichever direction you want. And we have our item spawner right there. That's where the weapon spawns. Drag it out a little bit. And now we have our rack in game. Now next to our rack, we can click on this cube prototype, which is our map. We can actually change locations mid game if we really wanted to. And it's a bit far, so we can just drag it. And here we go. And we have our main four things that we need in order to spawn weapons, make waves, attach weapons to the rack, and spawn in to different locations. In order to make sure that everything is all set, we need to add them to the level definition. Notice these are missing now. We need to just drag in the creature spawner, item spawner, rack, and cube prototype. If you don't want this to be named cube prototype, you can obviously rename it after right clicking and going to unpack it and name it something like map same thing with racks melee as long as it's in now so if we name it to rack like that you can also unpack it and since we've already dragged them in and just renamed them everything stays the same now a couple cool things that you can do to your map is if we add in a kill zone underneath it. So that kill zone is not where we want it. So let's set it to zero, zero, zero. So directly under our map. So whenever an enemy falls through, we want to kill them, of course, because enemies always get in our way. So all we need to do is increase the scale of it right here. Just in case we throw enemies, we can set it to 20 there, 20 there, and just in case we throw enemies with telekinesis or off the map or something. One cool thing we can do after we make sure it's directly underneath our map, which it is now, is we can duplicate it a couple times. So if we do control D, drag this up, you'll notice and now we have two of them. So we can throw enemies that high and any enemy that hits this will despawn. In order to set that up, the zone is already actually set up pretty well. So it kills the NPC when it touches them. It despawns the NPC, the killed NPC, and any items that touch it will despawn as well. One other thing you can do is click teleport player and simply just drag in to start. So whenever your player touches these, the player will teleport to the location that is start. So wherever we start the game. So if we click on it, we should probably make sure that it's set in the right location first, which we are a bit high, so we can lower that a bit. And what we can do is now do control D to copy this, set it to 90, maybe drag it up just a little bit. We can do the same thing on this side. Again, let's set it to zero this time, set it to 90 on the Z axis, move it over. Let's say right about here. That looks to be good. Maybe lift it up just a tad. Control D on this one, drag it over. And now I can show you guys 
it looks like, well, a cube. So any enemy that touches our cube, since there's no spots left open in the cube, they will instantly die. And if we touch it, well, then we get teleported right back to our spawn point. We can also clean this up a bit by creating a new game object, naming it kill zones, and just drag in all of our kill zones and deselecting our ground. And now we have all of our kill zones in one spot. Now guys, keep in mind one thing. So there's a couple specialty things you can do to actually improve performance and stuff. So for example, anything that is not moving, we want to click static, which helps with all this stuff. So just in case we want to add in a couple other things and not actually see them. So we have our cubes, for example, let's add in a couple of them and I'll show you guys why in a second. Just like this. What we want to do is right click, create an empty, let's name it occlusion area. We want to add in our occlusion area script. And make sure that this is completely covering every part of our map. So in this case, let's just set it to 100 on everything. I'm not really sure if setting it to be too large really has an, an impact or not, but that should be fine. So the point of adding the occlusion area is, especially with larger maps that have a lot of objects and stuff you want, if we add in a camera real quick, I can show you guys. And this is for the occlusion culling. So after we've added in our camera, we go to Window, Rendering, Occlusion Culling. All we want to do after adding in all this stuff, click Bake. And this will help us. So notice we can't actually see the cubes anymore once we've selected the camera. All we need to do is turn it. And now notice, it's a little bit tough for you guys to see, but our cube now pops up. So anytime we're looking at the items, like this cube, for example, after baking in the occlusion culling, we will be able to see it. When we don't see it, nothing will pop up. This greatly helps with performance on a lot of large maps. You'll notice it does the same thing for all these items in the background. And just making sure that you guys understand, we want to make sure that all of these items that we want to have the occlusion culling, are checked off and occluder static and i'm not sure if include static is needed as well but that as well or you can always just click it if it's non-moving another thing to help our performance is we go to a similar place so if we close out our occlusion tab we go to window rendering lighting drag it in and we can actually bake our lighting into the scene so we have our directional light right here which this is what it looks like, you can set it to baked. Now, keep in mind, these are just the settings that I use. You will most likely hear everybody telling you that I'm wrong, but it is what it is. So we press new lighting settings. I'm gonna be using my GPU, and I think these are good so far. So why don't we set this to be 20, 512. Those look good, off baked indirect. So now we have baked indirect, we have 20 and 512. Now we click generate lighting and this will bake our lighting into the map. So when we're actually in game, our performance won't decrease. We won't have real time lighting. It'll just be based on the lighting baked into the objects and stuff. And this is what it'll look like when it's done. Our lighting has been baked onto everything. And what we can do is click on our baked light maps, click on this and it'll bring you to them. If you want to compress them even further, now I'd highly recommend doing this for the light maps and for any textures as well. So to decrease the build size and file size of your map, you want to click on these and click on any textures as well, like this wood texture, the ground texture, any textures. And we want to click crunch compress, apply. Now, if you just leave it on high quality, you check this off and leave it at 50, the compression will decrease the size of everything and keep the actual textures of everything looking almost identical, if not identical. So it's a win-win situation. After doing that, I'd also like to recommend deleting all the cameras because they mess with your audio when you're in game. So delete both cameras. And last but not least, we can make sure to check off static on our ground because what we need to do is make sure that navigation static is checked off so enemies can actually run around. 
go to Window, AI, Navigation. Here we're going to want to just bake this in. If you have steeper stuff, you can change the slope of it, but I'd highly recommend just leaving at the default settings and clicking Bake. Now, any enemy on this blue part will be able to run and walk around. When it's on this gray part, they will not be able to. But I believe that to be everything that we needed to do to our map in order to make it performant and have everything work properly. And now that we've finished our map, let's get to working on exporting it and creating the JSONs. We right click, create a new packed asset. And we can rename this test map one. And of course, let's make sure to check offset it to default. What we're going to want to do is actually go back to our test map. So if we go to assets, all we want to do is drag this guy in. Make sure to set it to Windows for PC VR, Android if you want to do it for Nomad. Or I since it's both, I believe you can just check off both like this. And now it can work for either one. So we can set it to PyPop 101's test map. One. Make sure to go to our asset bundle builder and deselect all these guys and we're going to want to just duplicate either one so my common we dimension you can change it to test map one that'll be the folder name when it's in our mods folder and we can of course change the name right here too just to make sure so yeah test map one let's click on this type in test map one or just select it like that no issue with it we Click out of the asset bundle builder. It shows up now, already checked off for us. And that should be it, guys. So if we build the asset bundle group for our test map, start creating our JSONs for it. Now, if you don't know how to actually access the JSONs already, I have another tutorial for that link in the description. Definitely check that out. What we need to do is go to our levels. And why don't we just take the arena level map? There shouldn't be any issues with that. So we can start working on that here. We're going to want to name it test map one, just so we can keep the naming the exact same. We have arena. We change both of these to test map. This is what it will look like. It's actually in the book. And we can just keep it the same. There's no issue. And now we can change our description to whatever we like. Something awesome, like something you guys should definitely do. And here is the thing that matters most, our scene address, which we named pipop101s.testmap1. All of these don't really matter all that much. You can change the map location. This is just where it will show up on the map. But that should really be it, guys. So if we do Control S, all you want to make sure to do is after actually making this JSON, we want to go to our test map one folder that was created. So Unity automatically creates our folder for us. Here we are. And last but not least, we need to add in a manifest. Take it from any mod that you want, preferably one with your name already on it to make life easier. And of course, make sure that the folder name and this name right here are the exact same. So test map one, test map one. And well, it's a map by me. And the game version needs to be exactly 0 0.11. 0, 0. If it's not this, it will not work. So now we do Control S, and our map is done. So let's check it out in game. And that is it for this video. So if you guys like the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton. Thanks for watching.